we're gonna be doing a medication overview and the medication of choice is aspirin. So let's talk for a little bit about aspirin. But before we jump into that, I do have to say, this should not replace the pharmaceuticals directions on the back of any medication, should not replace your uh, physician's direct orders. Um, so seek out proper professional medical direction before using medications. Um, do not use this as a instruction or as professional advice on when and where to use medication. So aspirin's a fairly common medication. Uh, I would imagine that just about everybody watching this video has heard of the medication and has probably used it sometime in the past. But do you know what it's doing in your body? And do you know how it interacts with things? Do you know side effects of it? Do you know what some of the dangers may be of taking aspirin? Do you know the correct doses for using aspirin? So let's take a look at some of these things. But before we jump into all of these details, let's just take a broad overview of aspirin. First off, aspirin is a generic name for this medication. So a brand name for aspirin would be something like Bayer, who you're probably uh, familiar with, or Ecotrin, that's another brand. There's several other different brands. In fact, Walgreens and several of these uh, drugstores have their own house brands of this, but aspirin's a fairly common drug. So aspirin falls in a classification of NSAIDs, or non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory drugs. So the dose for aspirin is 325 milligrams. That is one typical tablet of something like a Bayer aspirin. Sometimes this is doubled and sometimes even tripled uh, depending on how often you take this and what you're taking it for. Make sure to follow manufacturer's recommendations on the back of the bottle uh, for proper dosing on that. Something else that you'll often see is something called baby aspirin. So this baby aspirin is a smaller dose of aspirin. And I don't have a way to verify this, but I think that name originally came from uh, them giving this to babies, which is where the baby aspirin came from. But today, we call that a baby aspirin. It's 81 milligrams. It's a fourth of the dose of a full-sized aspirin, but we do not give that to babies. So don't get that confused. Aspirin should not be given to babies under any conditions. And it is very seldomly given to any child or teenager due to the possible complication of Ray's syndrome. This is a swelling to liver in the brain. Um, it does not happen all the time, but it has happened enough to where now this is a possible side effect, especially in children. Uh, so aspirin is not recommended to give to children. So if we are looking for a uh, antipyretic, which is a treatment for fever or a uh, analgesic, um, there are some other options like Tylenol and Motrin uh, that we can give pediatrics. So let's make sure that we're not using aspirin for babies, even though it is called baby aspirin. So let's take a look at some of the things that we might take aspirin for. One, we might take it as a pain reliever or an analgesic. This will help reduce some of the pain specifically related to inflammation. Um, and we'll get further into that on why that happens in a little bit. We could also use this as an antipyretic. So an antipyretic is really just a fever reducer. And a lot of times this goes hand in hand with something that is an analgesic uh, related to inflammation since our body will increase temperature and inflammation a lot of times at the same time. Another very common use for aspirin is to help prevent further uh, clots being built up in the body. So sometimes you may see someone that is either a heart patient or at high risk for uh, heart disease to be on a daily dose of a baby aspirin. This daily dose helps to prevent clots from forming inside the body, which could end up leading to an embolism, which is a blockage, a blood clot that's now blocking a blood flow somewhere, either in the heart, the brain, um, or any other place in the body. So while there are good uses for this drug aspirin, you have to remember every medication or drug has a side effect. And we don't get to choose to have the drug just deliver the good stuff and not the bad stuff. Anytime we take a medication, you get the full range of effects from that medication. The stuff that you wanted, like pain relief or a clot inhibitor, and you also get the side effects, like bleeding disorders, because now the body can't clot properly. We also have a other range of side effects that comes with aspirin specifically, but let's take a look at that as we dive a little bit further in how aspirin works in our body. The technical name for aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid. This is 
intrinsically what the medication is, and that's what we are ingesting into our body when we take a dose of aspirin. The way this works in our body is it binds to cyclooxygenase enzymes and prevents further production of prostaglandins. Now, hang on a minute before I lose you. Let's simplify this, and by the time I explain this in a little bit more detail, I think this will make a little bit more sense. So when our body is injured, we have inflammation. Due to that inflammation and the pressure in those areas, we also have increased pain. So let's say you go run a 5K and you're not used to running. Well, you may have some inflammation in your body, particularly in your joints, because your joints have now exerted themselves past what they are used to. So now we've got inflammation, we've got pain in those areas, and so what do we typically do? So we ice it and that constricts the blood vessels, which prevents some of the further uh, inflammation. We wrap it with a pressure dressing because that will also help hold things together and not allow as much fluid to seep through the vessels. And by decreasing that inflammation in the joint, we also get reduced pain because there's not as much pressure in that area. Now, what's something else that we often do? Well, we'll pop a NSAID, like Advil or aspirin. We take that and that will reduce some of the inflammation systemically across our body, but particularly in those areas where we're now feeling that pain from the inflammation. That inflammation is our body's response to a problem by saying, hey, we're gonna increase all these healing properties at the site of injury. And through that process, the prostaglandins are very important in that process of getting all these healing properties to happen. So whether your body's fighting an infection or a injury at a joint, we have some of this increased swelling and we have sometimes even increased fever from the body trying to uh, counteract a virus. The body kicks into overdrive, increases heat. We're also trying to increase the body's temperature to try to kill off some of the viruses. Viruses live better in colder environments, which is why you often get sick in the winter with viruses rather than the summer. It's not across the board, but just in general terms, that's kind of how that works. So if we increase the body's temperature, our body is now an environment that the virus cannot readily thrive in, and that's part of the process of trying to kill out this virus. So all these things take place as a result of these prostaglandins. So if we can block the production of that prostaglandin, we can hopefully eliminate some of these side effects of that prostaglandin. Now, is this a good thing? Not all the time, because we're blocking our body's natural response to try to heal itself and fight infection. But it may decrease some swelling, some pain, um, and some things like that, that we may be trying to achieve by taking an aspirin. Let me just pause for just a second. And if you find anything in this video helpful, leave us a like, that would really help us out. And if you have any questions or need clarification on any of the things we talked about in this video, leave us a comment below, we'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and make sure your notifications are on so you get an alert anytime we post future videos. Now one problem with aspirin is it's non-selective when it binds to these cyclooxygenase enzymes. There are different, cyclooxygenase enzymes, and those enzymes will produce different types of prostaglandins, but it's non-selective, so it binds to all these. So we get a whole blanket effect. So along with binding on the cyclooxygenase two, which inhibits some of the uh, pain, inflammation, and swelling that we are experiencing, we also are binding to a cyclooxygenase one. And this specifically helps reduce the amount of clots um, and the formation of clots in our body, which can be a good or bad thing depending on where we are and what we're doing. But cyclooxygenase one is also beneficial in producing a lining for our stomach. But this lining in our stomach is a gastrointestinal mucus that lines our stomach and protects our actual stomach from the very acidic stomach acid that is sitting inside it. By decreasing this cyclooxygenase one, which may be a desired effect for clotting, we now decrease the lining in the stomach, which can then lead to the stomach acid reacting with the stomach and we get something like an ulcer. We could even have stomach bleeding. And now, not only do we have bleeding, but we've just inhibited the ability for that blood to clot as well to be able to stop that bleeding. So as you can see, there are some positive effects of taking a medication, but you're never gonna be able to just get the positive effects without the side effects that are oftentimes negative. So this leads us into using aspirin as an antiplatelet aggregate. Now aspirin is not a blood thinner. It works differently than something like a warfarin that you may take um, as a blood thinner. The way aspirin works for clotting is it prevents all these platelets 
from actually aggregating and sticking together. So without getting into the clotting cascade and getting too deep into how all this works, just keep in mind that when you take an aspirin, it will keep these platelets from sticking together and forming a clot as well as it would if there were no aspirin on board. So we may see patients that have had open heart surgery or stents in the past, or maybe even strokes or PEs, be on a aspirin a day, and that helps to prevent the formation of clots in the body. This is one reason why you wanna make sure that you do not give aspirin to a trauma patient. So if you have a trauma patient that has experienced any type of bleeding, or specifically someone that could have internal bleeding, we don't wanna give aspirin to these patients. But if we have a cardiac patient that looks to be having an acute uh, MI or a heart attack, that's what that means. Acute MI means uh, sudden uh, myocardial infarction is just death of the heart muscle. So someone that's having a heart attack right now, that aspirin could end up buying them time, preventing that clot from getting any worse, and allow them to be able to get to a cardiac facility to have a stent placed. So for this reason, we see aspirin used as a front light and treatment uh, for EMTs and paramedics uh, for someone that's having a cardiac event. Now, in theory, you could use aspirin for someone that may be a stroke patient if that stroke is resulting from a blood clot. But the reason we don't give aspirin to stroke patients is because that stroke may be caused by a bleed in the brain rather than a clot that is blocking blood flow in the brain. And if we were to give aspirin to a patient with a bleed, well, we've already kind of been over that. It could make matters worse, and now it's really not gonna clot off. We could do more harm for this patient than good. So, as a quick recap for aspirin, we have aspirin, which is also technically called acetyl salicylic acid. And this comes in two main forms. We can find this as 325 milligrams as a single dose. That is sometimes doubled or even tripled. Only do that based off the manufacturer's recommendations or what your doctor prescribes. But we can also find this in a baby dose of aspirin. And remember, baby dose is not for babies, it's a smaller dose of aspirin. So this is 81 milligrams, and we often see this taken once a day by patients that are susceptible to some form of blood clotting. So aspirin is primarily used now to keep platelets from sticking together inside the body so we don't have uh, clot formation as rapidly. And while aspirin has been used in the past for fever reduction and pain management, we have some medications that don't have some of the same side effects uh, that we would prefer to use nowadays, and that would be something like Advil, uh, Motrin, Tylenol, something like that that's still an NSAID, uh, but works a little bit differently uh, than aspirin. So keep in mind, if you're taking aspirin, uh, it's always safest to consult with a doctor to make sure that that is right for you uh, with some of the other illnesses, diseases, um, or past medical history that you may have. Also with any other medications you may be taking, we wanna make sure that this aspirin is not gonna have any ill side effects. Keep in mind that when we take a drug, there are always uh, the pros and the cons to taking it, and we need to make sure those pros outweigh the cons. So even though we're gonna have some adverse reactions or some negative effects to taking that medication, the benefit of taking it outweighs some of those side effects, and that's why we wanna end up taking this medication. Hopefully this helped to explain a little bit more about aspirin. Hope you feel a little more comfortable with it. As always, uh, do your own research. Make sure that you follow the manufacturers and pharmaceutical companies' recommendations before taking any medication. If you have any questions, uh, follow up with your doctor specifically, um, and make sure that you are using good medical practice. If you have any specifics on uh, dosing or medication usage for yourself, follow up with your primary care physician and get their recommendation here. Well, that's it for today. As always, stay vigilant and stay safe.